President, thank you. I rise to make a quick statement. I wanted to mention um, earlier this sure. month I had opportunity to open the Geraldton Suicide Prevention Action Group Conference. The Suicide Prevention Action Groups are grass, grassroots groups that work together and build, just establish themselves in communities with the, with the common purpose of preventing suicide in their vulnerable to, sorry, excuse me, amongst vulnerable members of their community. The conference in Geraldton was organised by the Geraldton Suicide Prevention Action Group to bring all the various groups from small communities throughout WA together to help them build networks and skills to improve the work that they do in terms of preventing suicides in the communities. They're also ably supported by the Wesley Network Group who help to build the skills and capacity that those groups have to deliver and work towards achieving their goal of preventing suicides. The conference that they had is the first one of its kind. It's a new initiative for the group and it's one that um, was really important for them and I stayed and participated in the conference for a while because it really helped build their support for each other in the important work that they do. There was a lot of um, time spent with them merely communicating with each other, which I would suggest is part of their core function and that is to demonstrate how important communication mm -hmm. is in making sure we understand where people are at and ensuring that they stay so safe in our community. I would just like to acknowledge the various groups that have suicide action prevention groups in their community. So we're talking about Wanneroo, Esperance, Collie, Carnarvon, Halls Creek, Derby, Meriden, Cojanup, Northcliffe and of course Gelton. I'd really like to thank all of those volunteers who contribute their time and their efforts to keep people in our community safe and recognise that that grassroots action that they contribute to is so very, very important in creating a positive change in terms of suicide prevention in communities. In 2020, 3,139 people uh, suicided, which is more than double the road toll. 75% of those were men. However, it should be noted that women are more likely to attempt suicide more times. So the issue is broadly speaking uh, uh, across all genders. These figures are sadly staying quite consistent and the highest risk group are men aged 20 to 54. Other high risk groups in include our Indigenous population. People living in rural and remote areas are twice as likely to die from suicide as people living in major cities and um, urban areas. And some of our other vulnerable groups include our LGBTQIA plus community and our um, culturally and linguistically diverse community. The impact of suicide is widespread. It impacts all of our first responders, those who are in the community who are linked to the person who has taken their life, and also, of course, the family and friends and close colleagues of people whose lives have been taken due to suicide. It is important that we all work together to make sure that we prevent suicide. Um, and I would just like to make mention, before I just thank some of the key organisers of that conference, that. Um, it's really important that we all consider ways that we can work to prevent suicide. One of the ways that we can do that is by undertaking mental health first aid courses. They're only short courses. They're really important. Um, I've, done, I've done it myself a couple of times in terms of youth mental he health first aid and just more broadly mental health first aid. It provides you with excellent skills. No one expects you to solve the problem, but it helps you to identify and initiate those conversations and know how to refer on so that we can help to keep people safe. Um, and it makes you, it provides you with skills to be less um, awkward or less resistant to having those conversations when you can identify patterns that suggest someone might be at risk. This time of the year, the festive time of the year, there are people who are more vulnerable, who might, um, it amplifies for them some of their loneliness or some of their issues that they're feeling or prob problems around family as we look at Christmas. So it is really important that we initiate those conversations I'm just going to mention a couple of groups and emergency numbers, and I'm going to um, just mention the names of them, not the numbers, just to remind people that they're out there. But I'd also, um, as I look around the room, 
like to let my colleagues know that um, my new version of my business cards, on the back, one of the decisions my team has made is that we will put these emergency numbers in our business cards because it's a really easy way to connect the people to that information without having to draw attention to it, without them having, you know, us necessarily, if you're not comfortable even having a conversation, you just hand them your business card, it looks like you're handing a card, the numbers are there for them or if they might need to pass it on to someone. So I encourage you to perhaps think about doing similar if you're comfortable with that. So I'd like to just mention that if um, you do notice someone who's struggling, um, obviously if it's a serious um, problem or someone is already harmed, then we need to call the emergency number triple zero. But organisations and numbers from Lifeline, Beyond Blue, Suicide Callback Service, Men's Health, I'm sorry, the Mental Health Emergency Response Line and Men's Line. That's just to name a few of them. There's a lot of numbers out there. I'm going to put them on my Facebook page after this, and I encourage you to do that as well from time to time. Thank you.